We shall be reading from the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 2, chapter 2, chapter 2, and verse 1. The book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 2, 1. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. Israel was holiness of the Lord, the first fruit of his increase. Or that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord. What injustice have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me, have followed idols, and have become idolaters? Neither did they say, Where is the Lord? who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no one crossed and where no one dwelt? I brought you into a bountiful country to eat its fruit and its goodness, but when you entered you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? And those who handle the Lord did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and walked out of things that do not profit. Therefore I will yet bring charges against you, says the Lord, and against your children's children I will bring charges. For pass beyond the coast of Cyprus and see, send to Kedar and consider diligently, and see if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods? But my people have changed their glory, for what does not profit? Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Amen. Is it possible for this to happen? God wonders. Is it possible for the people have known a living, true God, glorious, and a God that acted with signs and wonders, with miracles, with greatness. For this people to say, He is not a God, and to follow other false gods, to follow idols, to follow statues, images, and even at one point in time, making a god, a calf, a golden calf, because that's how they've been taught in Egypt then. God wonders. God wonders because he knows very, very well that man doesn't change very easily. Man doesn't change easily his opinions, his thoughts, and especially what he prefers, and even more, his own beliefs. Man doesn't change. Someone who follows a specific soccer team, you will never see him change his team. Someone who is a communist, you will never see him change and become a democrat. But if in these simple things and in great difficulty, man changes his opinion and the army he is in, how much more when we're talking about God, an idolater won't change. The new fashion now, worshipping the twelve gods of Olympus, of ancient Greece. But what are you talking about? You believe in Apollo? Of course. This is the truth. 
they're the true God and they don't change their minds. A Muslim dies for his religion. A Buddhist sacrifices his life for his opinion and ideas. And God comes and says, Is this possible? Is this possible for the child of God to change army camps, in other words, to backslide and leave and adore other gods, no matter who they are? And the answer is, not only it is possible, but it's very, very easy also. Very, very easy. Was it ever possible? Adam and Eve, in that blessing that God placed them in, in that beautiful place, paradise. With only one condition, all of paradise is yours. Only from that tree of the knowledge of good and bad, please do not touch, because the consequences will be very serious. You shall die. Of course, they didn't know what death meant then. But is it possible for them not to stand faithful to that at least? I will go further on. Is it ever possible for a plate of lentil soup for Esau to sell his birthrights that God had given him? Is it ever possible? And now we're coming to the message, my brethren, of today. Is it ever possible for someone of us here today, and our names are written in the book of life by God Himself, and He has regenerated us, and He has baptized us with the Holy Spirit, at least most of us. And we've seen in our lives His wonders, His signs, His greatness. Is it ever possible for us to deny His name? Or to turn our back on Him. And God comes now to reveal the way of the people of God. How they fell. I remember, God says, I remember. I remember. In the beginning, when my favor was completely upon you. Whatever you asked, I gave it to you. Whatever annoyed you, I removed it. But I also remember the love of your betrothal and how much you loved me. How much you would cling onto me. When you followed me, without hesitation, coming out firstly from Egypt into a land that was barren and not sown, which no man had walked on before or no man had inhabited in this land, but you followed me and you belonged only to me, exclusively to me, like The first fruits belong to me. You gave me the first of all that you had because they belong to me. And that's how you belong to me, exclusively for me. You were my first fruit. You were my firstborn, a church of firstborns. Very important this, my brethren, for us to understand that not we are only children of God. But we are firstborn children of God. And because the word of God is on a personal basis and not general basis. Brother and sister, you are a firstborn child of God. Which means you have exclusively the complete love of your father. And you have all his inheritance. And we know very, very well that after the rapture of the church, we don't know what will happen and how we will be, but we know one thing very, very well, that we will be like Him. And today God showed me something which impressed me. 
when you see difficult situations and your heart is pinched, what am I going to do now? Turn your eyes toward God's blessings so the rest of the Holy Spirit can enter your heart. Today I was talking with a sister and she told me the difficulties, difficulty she's going through. I can't take it anymore, she said. And I was listening to her and I was saddened, burdened by her situation. And all of a sudden I looked at the church and it was shining. And God said to me, see what a nice church I gave you. And at once rest came into my heart. At once rest came into my heart of the Holy Spirit. Sorrows will come. You know what house God has given you up there in heaven, freely given to you. Do you know what glory you will obtain, not for two minutes, but forever and ever? And that's the love of God. Your enemies were vanished, were destroyed when you followed me, when my favor was upon you, and when you loved me with Thor, your first love. But, even though you followed me and I led you into my land, where you will eat honey and drink milk, my goods. You, in your heart, when you entered, you rejected me. Listen to this, dear Lord. As long as I led you, you were with me. As long as you had my brethren the message from heaven today is very big. As long as you had the waiting of blessings to come to you, you followed me. But when you reached where I took you in the land of blessings, there your heart changed. Your heart became different. You defiled my land. You made my heritage an abomination. And even though your priests should have glorified the Lord, they said, Where is the Lord? We can't see Him. Where is the Lord? We can't see Him. I point this out again. Where is the Lord? We cannot see Him. My brethren, can we see Jesus? Or does sorrow and troubles and sufferings, and when things get differently from what we expect, do we start to wonder, in other words, inside of us, unbelief is created, which leads us in decreasing of our love toward God, which leads us in departing God which leads us to reject the living and true God and to come to the point to worship and hope and trust other gods, false gods, other words and other situations. Our eyes toward eternal life. Our eyes toward heaven. You defied my land. You defied my inheritance. The priest said, Where is the Lord? And those who handled the law, those who had the word of God in their hands, through the word of God, they did not acknowledge me, they did not find me. They did not know me at all. Who is he? But is that it? This should not impress you. When John the Baptist was found in prison, who was called by Christ the biggest of the prophets, and he discerned that his life was finishing, and things came completely oppositely of what he was counting on, he did not know Christ anymore. Is he the one to come or are we waiting for someone else? 
Is this a church of Christ or is it something else? Is this a life in which I must walk in or should I choose something else? Those who handle the law, who should know God and preach God, they do not know me. And the rulers, kings, those who had authority in the people of God, the rulers also transgressed against me. Not by mistake, they became with full conscience, transgressed the word of God, and they were found against God. The prophets who should have said, Thus says the Lord God. They came to the point to say, Thus says Baal. Horrible. Unbelievable. And they ended up being enemies of God and to walk after things that do not profit. And God complains, What injustice have your fathers found in me? What did I do to you? What did you ask from me and I didn't give to you? What of all these things that I promised you did I not fulfill? Hallelujah. And he comes to the conclusion, My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, so they can quench their thirst. They hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can't hold water. They made cisterns of dirt that do not hold water, so they can drink from their muddy, dirty water, all that's left. But is it ever possible? But is it ever possible for the man of God? Not only it is possible, my brethren, but if we take under account very seriously that what our eyes see isn't all that's happening around us, but what our eyes see is a small part of it, a small part of true life. There's another spiritual war on. What the eyes of Eve saw wasn't the wisest of the animals, the serpent. And what her ears heard, Eve's ears heard, it was that the serpent was talking. But she did not discern that behind the voice of the serpent and the wisdom of the serpent was another face who very, very easily can fool and mock man because he has millions of years of experience. He is wise. He, he is full of understanding in craftiness, in lying, in deception and deceiving. It is he who doesn't try to deceive the whole world. It is he who has deceived and would deceive and keep on deceiving the whole world. And man, therefore, the creation of God, the chosen creation of God, is found against an enemy with awesome abilities. Against an enemy with evil and hatred, a murderer from the beginning against an enemy that's cunning, who knows very, very well man. He knows very, very well God. He knows the weaknesses of man. He knows how he can deceive man and fool man and mock man. And even though God strives with blessings, with His love, with His grace, God strives to hold man in his arms for the kingdom of heaven with the deception of wealth, with the pride of life, with desires of the flesh, the devil succeeds to fool man. 
to remove man, to deceive man, to show man other images of what they really are. That's why, my beloved brethren, we need the Word of God to reveal to us that that temporary sorrow isn't for you to explode, for you to die. But your sorrow, God permits in His unrestricted love of His, this temporary sorrow, because He's working God in our lives. An eternal weight of glory. Eternal weight of glory. Exceedingly great. Throughout eternity. And I say, Oh, my ear aches. What am I going to do? Where are you, Lord? And I see that brother and he's suffering. Aren't you here, Lord? And God comes today to turn our eyes, our vision, our hearts from this small suffering that God is permitting so we can be found approved steadfast, immovable on the way that God teaches us to walk on on the way that God has marked before us to be proven before all powers that under any circumstances whether we live, whether we die, we are the Lord's for all powers to understand in heaven and on earth that Jesus Christ worked great work in our hearts and He changed our hearts, He changed our vision, He changed our thoughts, He changed our lives and He took us out of earthly and vain things which make man vain and He brought us into the heavenly things, eternal things which glorify man. We are not taken away by any wind of doctrine because our teacher is Jesus. We are not like the grass that is burnt by the sun and makes it wither away. We are like the rock because we are on the rock. And the waves, even if they crash upon us, and if the rains and lightning bolts fall upon us and destruction falls, the rock does not move because inside of us abides the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit. You are not any kind of creation built on the sand that with the lightest breeze you shall fall. You are a creation which God built. The temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple of God. Because inside of you dwells the Holy Spirit of the Lord. My beloved brethren. One message. Believer, continue believing. Amen. Let's sing the hymn 200.